Everything Canberra for your weekend. Call 6255 1206. This is the Canberra Weekender on 2CC. Welcome back. It is lovely to have your company on this very chilly Saturday, still two degrees, expecting a top of 13. It is time now uh, to welcome a few people into the studio. First of all, Alex Saharoff-Royt, welcome. Good morning. Uh, please remind me of your website that I forget every week. Sure, sure. I, I named it so it would be easy to remember, techadvice.life. No. Not me, not me. <laughs> uh, and we also welcome into the studio William and Martin Laverty. Welcome to the two of you. Thank you for having me. No worries. Now, uh, maybe you can introduce this, Alex. We um, William is the winner of the Swift, the Student Swift Challenge. Tell me about this. Yes, this is, uh, well, in a couple of weeks' time, on the 5th of June uh, in the US, it'll be the 6th of June at 3 a.m. for us to watch the keynote here in Australia. And you're going to get up. I'll aren't be you? up. I yes, know yes, you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you'll be able to watch it on YouTube and on Apple's website anytime that you want. You don't have to be up at 3 o'clock. But that's when we learn about the newest operating systems from Apple for their iPhones, iPads, Apple Watch, Mac OS, everything. And they have a huge number of uh, developers that attend both in person and on online and they have all of the different uh, Apple engineers there to help developers understand all the new things they can do and answer questions and um, Apple uh, has announced that there are five students from Australia who who won the WWDC Swift student challenge and that's an opportunity for student developers to showcase a love of coding this is the 12th year of this uh, formal student program uh, and uh, will who we'll talk to in just a moment actually won a uh, couple of years ago but because of covid wasn't able to go and this year he can go uh, which is going to be fantastic and he'll get uh, some uh, some uh, clothing some airpods pro a customized pin set and a one-year membership into the apple developer program but will congratulations on your second win uh, in the wwdc 20 23 student, Swift Student Challenge. Yeah, thank you. It was pretty cool to win this year. Um, second time, so and this time I get to go to America to watch it live. Yeah, so exciting. So what did you what did you do to win, William? Talk us through the process. Um, so basically, I had to create an innovative app that mm -hmm. showcased my programming skills, and mm -hmm. then. I had to show it to these Apple developers to judge and they liked what I made, so yeah. What did you make? Uh, I made a environmental game which was focused on pollution, so you played as a penguin that avoided uh, trash oh, see, obstacles. See, that's smart. Topical. I yeah. love it. Yeah, that'll get you over the line. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Furry animals, you know, cute animals. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Because you've been doing this for a while, haven't you? We were talking off air. You built an app for your mum, which I'm very proud of. Yeah, so I built a few apps in the past, like focused around my musical talents and then cooking as well, which is a subject that I kind of enjoy. So yeah. the cooking app was mainly focused to get recipes and just help in the daily life. Yeah. Fantastic. So what got you into programming and at what age? Um, I think around seven or eight I got into programming and I mean looking at my parents they didn't have a technological background so. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> Look, yeah. I was just going to say looking at dad he's like what? Yeah. It it's was true. It was kind of interesting how I got into it but I saw a few students who were older around my age now mm -hmm. and I just wanted to be like them and go to America and do what they did. So were there other students in your school, were they previous winners as well? Uh, there were two or three winners when I was around 10. Okay. And yeah, they got to experience what I'm going to be experiencing in the next few weeks. And did they give a little talk to explain afterwards what, what happened? Um, I think they appeared on the Canberra Times, but that's where I saw them and I cut out their photos and just stuck them on my wall for a few years. Yeah. That's awesome. Martin, as dad, it's funny, isn't it? Like as parents of teenagers, uh, we often lament, oh, they're always playing video games. It'll never amount to anything. Obviously, it's clearly amounting to something here, like that, that technological nous. Well, this is such a proud dad moment. Love it. And he's talking in a language that we as parents just simply don't understand. Yeah. So the excitement in knowing that COVID knocked everyone around a little mm. bit mm. and the disappointment of not being able to get to the States two years ago is now so far behind us. Mm. Yeah. Bags are about to be packed, not just for this trip, but what's ahead for William and others of his age? Are like you going him. along too? Uh, we flipped a coin at home, and uh, my beautiful wife Fiona is packing oh, her bags. Lucky to Fiona, head on. fantastic! <laughs> but both of us, both Fiona and I, aren't really averse in the 800 lines of code that Bill has had to write that sits behind this app. And I think of uh, when I was at school, I learned Latin, a dead yeah. language that mm. didn't help me out today. Yeah. Whereas this next generation is getting the toolkit to be able to be at the beginning of this AI revolution. And we've got such great hopes for not just William, mm. but the next generation. You know, the kids are all right. 
I yeah. think so too. Did you always see that he had a, a knack for this sort of stuff? Uh, Bill has, uh, from a very early age, left us behind. He has been the person in the household who's fixed the technology and it's broke. <laughs> yes. There's, of course, been a few misadventures, which we won't talk about on air this morning. Oh, damn. Okay. All right. Things pulled apart and put back together and in, with bits missing? Everything is okay and in working state now. <laughs> I love so, it. So, William, at 15, or Bill, at 15, yeah. your whole life is ahead of you. So where do you see yourself in the future? You know, will you become a developer, creating great apps? Uh, will you study IT in, in university? And, uh, you know, uh, are you going to be entering uh, future WWDC Swift student challenges whilst you're still Which able, sounds like you know, a wrestling eligible. tournament, by the way. Like a, I don't <laughs> yeah. know what you're going over there for, Bill, but, yeah. Um, well, I do plan to enter future events, which I think I've got two more opportunities before I've reached the cutoff for what I'm allowed to do. Mm -hmm. But I have a few kind of experiences that I can progress with. So I'm a videographer, I get paid for that. And I also enjoy making websites that sell products. Yeah. Wow, I'll be chatting to you off air. That's yeah. <laughs> amazing. The, and does, does the app that you won uh, the challenge for, does that does that become a real app or? Um, I don't think it will. Okay. Like it was more just to see what I could do, but I could potentially create it into a like mainstream app if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an interesting juxtaposition because I guess you've got to have that really logical kind of engineering brain, but then you have to be really creative because there's such a glut of apps, isn't there? Yeah. There's so many. So how do you kind of cut through that and to be different? Oh, uh, it's pretty hard because millions of apps are being created nearly every year, and to be like that one that stands out and gets selected, that's like it's just a big problem to begin with, and. I think I'm more focused on the creative side, you know, like mm -hmm. figuring out what people want to see instead of just doing what I want. You have to focus on the bigger market. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any ideas bubbling underneath that you'd like to? Um, I have a few ideas, but the main one I think I'll keep to myself. I was going to say, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, all, all the trade secrets. J just quickly, did you learn um, Objective-C or, you know, the previous version of programming or did you start with Apple Swift? Um, yeah, no, I never learned Objective-C or what Apple originally offered. I started on Swift and that is currently my favourite language, yeah. And so how, just quickly, how easy have you found it to program in that? And what message would you give to other young people listening uh, in Australia or around the world who'd like to emulate your success? Uh, well, Swift is a very versatile language. Like, it's pretty easy to understand and not as complicated as in the movies. Mm. And for future generations, I think just giving it a try is a good go. Like it will definitely be a job career that will prosper in the future. And yeah, it's a creative task that I like doing. Your dad alluded to this, that you've kind of left us behind your generation, you know, because we grew up in a time where this just wasn't around. I mean, do you think that school is keeping up with what you guys are doing at the moment? Um, I definitely think there are multiple schools that I've seen that are definitely ahead of the times. Okay. and. My school in particular is always... You're a grammar. Yeah. Yep. They're always redeveloping the courses to, I guess, stay ahead of what's mm. happening Because I feel like half world. the time you guys could be teaching these classes, you know? <laughs> like um, I do yeah. find myself teaching a lot of students, yeah. And I bet, yeah. There's a lot of teachers that just won't understand it and you have to help them. But yeah. I think the school's very, like, skillful in, I guess, managing students who want to go above and beyond. Fantastic. Well, you are just a beacon of inspiration for young people. But can we invite you back when you when you get back from the states? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. If I don't have jet lag, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not day off. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm sure Fiona will buy something duty free, Martin. Gee, yeah, I hope so. And yeah. just just Martin, any final messages for other parents out there with. Uh, you know, talented kids that uh, maybe are not in grammar that want to really get into technology and be part of this competition or just making apps? Well, I suspect all of us with kids growing up are, are initially concerned about technology and what it means, and particularly the unknown part of social media. Mm. We've had to work through that, but we now see this potential of what it can give to a child who's so very interested. Every kid's got to find their own thing to be interested in. Mm. That's what William's found, and we're just so proud of him that everything is now... Uh, within reach for him and what a future he's got. Yeah, fantastic. We're often talking about the dystopian possibilities of mm. artificial intelligence on this show, but I love that this is a positive story. Today. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, very Congratulations much so. again, Bill. Thank fantastic. You. Uh, that is Bill and Martin Laverty. Um, we, you are listening to the tech segment. If you've got a question for Alex Zahara, for it, 1206 or you can email studio at 2 ccnetau We'll be back shortly. 
Join us in the weekender on 6255-1206. The Canberra Weekender on 2CC. Welcome back. Still looking pretty foggy out here at Grace at two and a half degrees out there, heading for a top of 13 in the capital today. We are talking tech with Alex Sahara Freud. If you have a question, 6255-1206, or you can email studio at 2CC.net.au. Gosh, that was an inspirational teen, wasn't it, Alex? Wonderful, yeah. It's Goodness great. To, me. The next generation is the one that... Uh, is the future leaders, the future programmers, the ones who are going to be dealing with all these AI yeah. uh, issues. Yeah, and I think harnessing that technology as well is really cool, yeah. you know, not just playing video games all day, but That's actually right. doing something proactive. And at WWDC, we're going to hear what Apple plans to do with AI, most likely. We're going to hear what they're going to do with headsets, and mm -hmm. you know, their vision of technology is often what the industry uses to copy what to do next, so it'll be fascinating to see, and lots of students from around the world will be there. Just jumping to a related story, uh, TikTok putting out a report on online safety for teens. Yes, yes. So well, the dark side of, of what kids are experiencing at the moment. That's right. Yeah, well, you know, that what's happening here is that uh, they put out this report. They're, they're looking at um, how parents are, you know, not sure how to communicate with their children about uh, all of these uh, technological issues. There's cyberbullying, there's um, you know, strangers, meeting strangers online. Um, they're just not really certain about this. And I, I sort of do wonder sometimes whether the, the problem is, you know, TikTok itself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but the thing is the parents do, but the thing is you will find these sorts of issues on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. And they're talking about 54% of parents are worried about cyberbullying, 49% are worried about their kids, their teenagers connecting with strangers, 50% uh, are worried about explicit content. And uh, the key findings are that, you know, parents, 39% of them are not completely confident about discussing online safety with their children. 56% mm. are waiting for a trigger such as them coming uh, to, you know, the kids coming to the parents with a problem. I mean, don't wait. Talk to them. Be proactive about it. We heard with Martin and, and uh, Will how they are proactively working on these topics because they have to. I mean, you, you can't. Mm. You don't want to hear about the problems at the end. You want to be proactively working on mm. them. It's easy to be left behind, I yeah. think, because yeah. so, you didn't grow up with this stuff. Yeah, yeah that's right. Fifty percent of uh, fifty-seven percent are waiting for a change in their kids' moods or habits. Fifty-seven percent are relying on information from external sources, like the news or information coming from another source. So again. Sit down with your kids, talk about this, surf uh, the internet and social media with them, show them what the dangers are, uh, you know, be part of their digital lives, otherwise you'll find out later when it's too late. For cyber trolling and bullying, I mean, it used to just be in the schoolyard and the classroom and now it just extends... It's just twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Asus launching a new laptop. Yes, well, twenty four new laptops actually, and oh. these uh, laptops all have OLED screens. Now, OLED screens are very bright and vibrant. They've got really mm -hmm. wonderful deep blacks. And if you put a laptop with an LCD screen and an OLED screen side by side, mm -hmm. you can really see the difference. And so, back in twenty twenty one, there were just three models. So. Asus sells so many of these OLED laptops they're able to get such a great price for them that they can push the prices down and they're trying to put it into every price point. Now they don't have it in the sub $1,000 price point yet. They're hoping to do that later this year. Mm -hmm. But their cheapest one with an OLED display is $13.99. They have them in their Vivo books, their mm -hmm. Zen books and their Pro Studio books. Now the some of the Zen books actually have two screens. You've got a screen, the normal screen and then above the keyboard, they push the keyboard down, put the mouse to the right hand side and there's another screen above where the keyboard would normally sit on a laptop and content creators you know use that second screen to do timelines look look up um, uh, various paintbrush options I mean there's all, all sorts of options and also they launched two computers one was the world's thinnest 13 inch laptop with an OLED display so it's a centimeter thin a kilogram in weight and they also had the world's first glasses free 3D OLED display laptop. And so when you were looking at it, you could actually see these, these images popping out of the screen. Mm -hmm. And they had a couple of cameras at the top of the, uh, the where the bezel is on the top of the of the screen. And you had to be looking at the screen because those little cameras looking at your eyes to position where the 3D image is going to appear. And if you look at it from the side, you can actually see the images are doubled up. I mean, it's glasses free, but it still uses the little lenses. So that model is not coming to Australia until next year. But um, yeah, a really cool range and they made a big song and dance about how these machines have these brighter screens, they've got cool designs, they're really going to stand out because obviously they hope to sell as many as possible and mm. you know, you, you've got to stand out from the competition. But next time you're looking for a laptop, you know, look at the displays, compare them and um, you know, see what catches your eye. Now Bill Gates with some commentary on AI, what's he saying? Yeah, well he was saying that uh, 
at, at a Goldman Sachs conference that uh, when we have these personal digital agents that really become a lot smarter than the sort of Siri, Alexa and Google Assistant that we have today, that they are going to replace search engines. They're going to replace uh, going to Amazon to buy things. They're going to replace even productivity software because you'll be able to talk to them, ask them for things, uh, ask them to book tickets, to find information, to do research, uh, to buy you, you know, find the best price on various things. And they'll do it without you having to go into a browser. They'll just give you a list of the most um, useful things that you want. They'll read information for you and summarize it in a way that is giving you the most salient points. And he's saying this could really change how we interact with um, you know, modern websites. And he says there's a 50-50 chance as to whether it's going to be an existing tech company like a Microsoft or a Google or somebody else that's going to deliver these things or that if they're all going to be disrupted by some other uh, new startup uh, we've had plenty of examples of disruption you know Uber disrupted the taxi industry Airbnb disrupted the um, you know the hotel industry Amazon disrupted retail so th all those companies could be disrupted too by some new startup uh, using AI and so Bill Gates has made this prediction AI still confuses me because I still feel like it isn't it inherently plagiarism because surely it's not capable of original thought. It's just using what's already out there but putting it together in new ways. Look, yeah, they, they say that if you copy one person, it's plagiarism. If you copy a bunch of people, it's research. So mm -hmm. what AI does is it copies a bunch of people and but it, it does have you know programmed into it the ability to remix and rewrite what you've got. Because I heard this week there was like... it developed antibiotics for a superbug AI. Well, they're also talking about how it was able to uh, use AI to help a person who was um, a quadriplegic or paraplegic, to, you know, could, lost the use of his legs, and they, the AI somehow was able to record his brainwave patterns and then send that information to his lower limbs so he could actually think and then walk. And this AI retraining of the brain uh, was helping him to actually start walking again because somehow you know the, this AI could connect both parts but two things one the next version of Windows 11 coming in June is going to have AI built in everywhere so you're going to have it on the sidebar it's going to be in all the different apps they're really trying to make Windows 11 this new version that's coming soon the first AI OS and so hopefully we're going to hear a lot from uh, Apple about what they're going to do in a couple of weeks time but also like generative AI inside of things like Adobe um, you know Photoshop they were showing this image and they were able to recreate entire sections of the image more intelligently than they could ever have before using what's known as this generative AI I mean there's a demo if you just type in Adobe generative AI demo into Google you can see the, the, the way that it recreated missing parts of an image just simply because you said I want to see more of this here I want to move this out here I want to put something else there and bang within seconds it was there and so this this you know it's like a paradigm shift mm. that we, we we are still riding the wave the wave hasn't crashed yet to to really change everything and uh, I mean we'll be talking about this in a few months going wow everything really has yeah. changed uh, five minutes the news I wanted to jump to this story because it affected me this week about Netflix cracking down on password sharing mm. and it's very funny because there was an old update they did on Facebook ages ago that said love is sharing your password yes that's, that's right like, and no more Netflix no, what's, what's right. going on here well look they lost a couple hundred million dollars and millions of uh, viewers at the end of the pandemic you know people were at home they were watching all of this content but you know when Netflix started losing money because people are sharing their passwords which they as you said they encouraged they're realizing well hey we only ever meant the password sharing to be within the household. You know, mm -hmm. someone's watching in the main room and not someone else is watching in one of their bedrooms or in the you know, kitchen or somewhere else, wherever it might be. Yeah. And um, But no, what people are doing is they're sharing it with their friends and family across uh, households, across cities, across countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's costing Netflix money. It's become very expensive to produce quality content. And so they're saying, look, if you are sharing it with other people, then each of those people needs to pay $7.99 mm -hmm. uh, Australian. And funnily enough, it's the same price in the US. How can they tell if you're sharing it? Because the same login mm. and password is coming from a different IP address right. to the main household. Mm -hmm. That's how they know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there are ways of pretending you're on the same IP address, but it's, you know, it costs extra money. It's cheaper just to pay the $7.99. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is a bunch of people are going to say, nah, we're just going to cancel. Other people are going to say, well, hang on. We're happy to watch Netflix anyway. If we were to get a separate account, it would cost us more than the $7.99. It's only if you are on the $6.99 account with ads 
that it would be cheaper mm -hmm. to get uh, two separate accounts. But most people don't want to be on the account with ads. They want to be on the, the two-viewer plan or the four-viewer plan, simultaneous-viewer plan with 4K. That's what many people have. They have the four-simultaneous-viewer plan. And so they can share it with up to four other people or even more if they're not all watching at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Netflix is clamping down and you'll either cancel or you'll pay. And uh, either way, this is something we're going to see Disney and – you know, Stan and a lot of other people do the same thing because they're saying, well, if Netflix can charge more, we can charge more too. I remember, I'm old enough to remember when Netflix was actually like DVDs coming in the mail. Yes, yeah. They, they recently just gave up that part of their business. Uh, oh, are they still doing it? They were still doing it, but uh, they've just recently decided it was time to give uh, They tried to give it up before, but people rebelled. Yeah, right. You know, people are st I mean, you can still buy. You can still go to JB Hi-Fi and buy things on Blu-ray and DVD, mm. but it's becoming less and less of a thing because streaming is just so simple. Blu-ray was such a funny thing, like picture discs or mini discs. or It never really took off. Look, Blu-ray is still around because it's giving you 4K, uh, true 4K without any compression. I don't know. I just never got into it. Yeah. No, know. look, the, the, it's like it's like purists who listen to super high quality music or buy the most expensive wines because, you know, they've got this palette for it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's the same with Blu-ray. They've got, you know, 7.1 or 12.1 surround sound home systems, giant uh, screens with 4K projectors or giant 4K TVs, and they want that super high quality. When you send something over streaming, it's normally compressed in some way. They try to compress it without you noticing any changes but with blu-ray the, the whole lot's there and so that's why blu-ray discs are not dead people still want to own stuff and, and stuff disappears off streaming mm. things that's get, true it get, is nice yeah. to physically if own you own things. it you've got it forever i've still got videos <laughs> yes like i actually do i still have a video player not that mm -hmm. i get it out but i have a lot of videos and things that you can't actually get on dvd like a lot of 90s classics can't get them, so there you go. But, um, yeah, I obviously have too much space because I don't know what I'm going to do if I ever, ever downsize. Now, and I just wanted to say, if you want to watch the, the ASUS event, I've got the whole event live and a couple mm -hmm. of other interviews at my site, techadvice.life, so you can actually, if you want to see what all the journalists saw, it's it's there. Fantastic. Uh, a minute to the news. Got any plans this weekend, Alex? Long weekend. Hey, hey. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to be at home the, Cleaning and sorting, and we've got the lots of gardening to do and cheese. And thanks for down. bringing like coffee and snacks. Well, yeah. I know that uh, you know you've been up since uh, the wee hours of the morning. Yes, and you need that boost, right? It was so well timed. It was very very nice, and I'll be looking forward to uh, William Levity uh, coming, coming back. back. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. What a what an inspiration. That well, I look was. forward to video interviewing him about the same topic. I mean, you, you can see see him as well in the future. It'll mm. be on techadvice.life. And there's plenty more stories we didn't get time to talk about yes. today that are there too. That are there. Yeah, I did want to ask you about the fake iPhones, but we don't have time now. Next week. Yeah, absolutely. We will catch you again next week. Alex, um, have a really, really good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.